It felt like judgment day in London this morning. And inside court one of the Supreme Court, it was. The Prime Minister's advice to Her Majesty was unlawful, void and of no effect. Outside, protesters on both sides of the Brexit debate, desperate to hear this unprecedented judgment. This means that the order in council to which it led was also unlawful, void and of no effect and should be quashed. This means that when the Royal Commissioners walked into the House of Lords, it was as if they had walked in with a blank sheet of paper. The prorogation was also void and of no effect. Parliament has not been prorogued. After an audible gasp in court for a decision taken unanimously by the judges, out came the victors. Today's ruling confirms that we are a nation governed by the rule of law. Laws that everyone, even the Prime Minister, is not above. His advice given to Her Majesty the Queen was unlawful, his position is untenable and he should have the guts for once to do the decent thing and resign. Yeah. 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 It's really this? good God then. I mean, I, I, I was confident they Remainer MPs who gathered outside are accused by the government of thwarting the will of the people. Far from this being a kind of parliament versus the people, what you've got is a Brexit elite that have hijacked our government and they've just been slapped down by our Supreme Court, uh, the highest court in the land, for trying to override parliamentary sovereignty. I wish we didn't have to have recourse to the courts. You know, I really wish that. But we have an executive that is lurching out of control and it is our duty, it's our obligation as parliament to be able to hold that executive to account. And we do that, not on our own account, but on behalf of the people. The Prime Minister in New York framed today's dramatic judgment rather differently. I have the highest uh, respect, of, of course, for our judiciary and for the independence of our courts, but I must say I strongly disagree uh, with this judgment. And we in the UK will not be deterred from getting on and delivering on the will of the people to come out of the EU on October the 31st. So what actually happened today? Baroness Hale termed this a one-off, but the Supreme Court decided it is its role to intervene when parliamentary sovereignty is being undermined. Is that a seismic shift of power away from the executive? The judges have got involved here, and yes, it is controversial, but the controversy began with the action of the Prime Minister in shutting down Parliament. And their ruling has said, that's not right, Parliament is the core of our constitution, and Parliament must meet, and the government must be held to account in Parliament. And in that sense, that is not controversial at all. They're putting things back the way they always have been. We uh, pass an act, William of Orange agreed to it. Nonsense, says this QC and Brexit Party candidate, who, contrary to Baroness Hale, argues the 1688 Bill of Rights means this wasn't the court's decision to make. He thinks it's a constitutional outrage. It is certainly a uh, huge um, encroachment on an area that should have been outside the court's uh, capacity to review. And once you do that, uh, there's no end to the um, possibilities uh, for future litigation. No end to it. Boris Johnson's own Attorney General is reported by Sky to have told him his prorogation was legally sound. So was today's judgment the dismantling of our constitution by unelected judges or a justified defence of Parliament's supremacy? These are just the latest questions to divide opinion in these turbulent times. That was Katie Razzle. We asked to speak to a government minister tonight. They said no. It's not just government ministers that are proving thin on the ground today. A leaked note apparently from the deputy chief whip has been circulating on Twitter. That's asking Conservative MPs to refrain from speaking to the media about that Supreme Court judgment. We had lots to ask them, not least about the Prime Minister's intentions now, whether Parliament or the Queen will receive an apology. 
we'll ask again tomorrow. But instead, joining us now, Dinah Rose, QC, a barrister specialising in public law and human rights, a colleague of Lord Panic, who led the case against the government, and the SNP's Joanna Cherry, who you saw in the film, who brought the original case before the Scottish judges, um, who judged the Prime Minister's actions unlawful. Um, Dinah, if I can start with you, you it, it was curious, you tweeted last week, I think, that you thought the claimants would win this. You said, yes. it's all over. What told you then it would be so cut and dried? I don't think I ever thought it was cut and dried, but it was when I was listening to Lord Panic's reply and a number of members of the court started to engage with him in detail on the question of remedy, what the remedy would be. Courts are busy places and the time is limited. They don't start talking in detail about what the right remedy is unless they think you've won the case. So at that point, you knew this was going to be pretty devastating for the government. I, I had a strong feeling that it was, yes. It still went further than you imagined, though. Yes, I, I didn't expect a unanimous result. I, I thought it was most likely that there would be a split in the court. Um, for the government to have lost this 11-0 is really pretty remarkable. Yeah. Of course, that's not what happened in the first Miller case, where there, there was a minority opinion as well. So, just going back to this remedy then, this whole question, the PM said this evening he strongly disagrees with the judgment. Is there any remedy open to him, to Boris Johnson tonight? What would you be expecting? Well, uh, he, he has been uh, completely painted into a corner by the court because what the court has said is that the prorogation itself is null and void. That when the commissioners went into the House of Lords to prorogue Parliament, they were effectively holding a blank piece of paper. Parliament is not prorogued. It can reconvene any time it wants to. So the government, uh, what, what can they do if they try to prorogue it again? They'll find themselves now bound by the four corners of this judgment. What about further down the road, though? Do you think um, there will be attempts to change the judiciary if they don't like the style of what they've seen? Well, theoretically, any government that doesn't like a judgment of the Supreme Court can take measures to reverse that judgment by bringing in legislation. Now, it can either bring in legislation to reverse the judgment, or in a more radical situation, it can say, well, I don't like the way this whole court is constituted. I want an American-style Supreme Court with political appointees. But in order to make those kinds of radical changes, you need a, a decent working majority in Parliament. And, of course, the reason we're in this situation at all is because the government doesn't have a majority in Parliament. So it's quite difficult to see what they could do on that front. Joanna Cherry, you brought the original ruling yeah. in Scotland, um, which has now been clearly upheld in the Supreme Court. Do you feel now, as a parliamentarian, that the Supreme Court has got your back? In other words, do you trust Boris Johnson more, or do you trust that he cannot... Well, I don't, trust, I don't trust Boris Johnson at all, given his track record. But I think the Supreme Court has performed an important function in restoring parliamentary democracy. It's done its job now, and it's for, par it's for Parliament to do its job politically now to hold this minority Conservative government to account. Would that mean that if a date for the election was set, you would have more trust that that date would be held? Because you can go to the Supreme Court, you know well, not where. Well, you can't say you can go to the Supreme Court. You have to have a cause of action and reasonable prospects of success. And, of course, this case in Scotland started in Scotland's outer house and Scotland's lower court, went to Scotland's appeal court and ended up in the Supreme Court. So I, I don't see the Supreme Court as a replacement for politics. I see the Supreme court's action as something that was necessary in extraordinary uh, circumstances to restore Parliament so that Parliament can hold the executive to account. So tomorrow you're all going to be back at 11.30 in the morning, according to the Speaker. In terms of what happens now, yeah. a vote of no confidence, will you be pushing Jeremy Corbyn for that tomorrow? Would you like to see that happen? Well, when Nicola Sturgeon gave her statement to the Scottish Parliament this afternoon, she made it very clear that it's hard to see how anyone could have confidence in this Prime Minister or this government. And the SNP would like to see a general election but we want to make sure that we've got the guarantees against a no-deal Brexit happening through the back door. With respect, in Nicola place, would say that whoever was <laughs> the Westminster uh, Prime Minister... Well, um, she might well do that, particularly as we're riding so high in the opinion polls and look to take most of the seats in Scotland. But the principle is different here, because Boris Johnson has been found to have uh, 
to have given advice that was incorrect to the Queen. And so we're not so, just talking about any old Prime Minister, we're talking about a Prime Minister... But what I'm really asking is, fashion. there was a time last week when we yeah. spoke, the week before, when Labour wasn't ready to have a general election, the SNP were. Would you like to see that election come now? Do you think that you can... Yeah, I mean, encourage I, Labour to say yes. Yes, but I think we will work together across party to make sure that it doesn't happen at a time which allows Boris Johnson to get a no-deal Brexit through the back door. So this will not be done to Boris Johnson's timetable, it will be done to the opposition's helps timetable. Him, doesn't it? Being constrained, it helps him. I'm sorry I don't follow. Well, in the sense that, you know, if he feels that Parliament is now against him, is that going to help him? I don't really see how it could help him. He's the Prime Minister of a minority government. Now that Parliament's back and up, up and running tomorrow, it has all the tools at its disposal to hold him to account. It's not just the questions that are asked on the floor of the House and the debates that take place there. It's also the Select Committee, such as the Brexit Select Committee, which I'm a member of and which is chaired by Hilary Benn. We've been told a lot of action has been happening in Brussels and these very important talks that, Bruss, that Boris Johnson says are taking place. Well, now is the opportunity for the Select Committees to get their teeth into what actually has been going on and to call ministers to account before the committee. So I don't think it does make life easier for Boris Johnson. Be in no doubt, the reason Boris Johnson suspended Parliament was because Parliament was making his life difficult and he wanted to get round it. The Supreme Court have told him that's not on under the Constitution and he needs to get on with his job while being scrutinised by Parliament.